tonight on Law Crimes. Colin gets interred in a dreadnought. Eli bench presses a land raider. And Hal crashes a drop pod into the administorum. Hello, Law Criminals, and welcome to Law Crimes. I am Hal, and joining me today is Eli, Colin, and Andy. And today we'll be talking about the Speed Boys, the Ordu Jagatai, the White Scars. And I will pass it over to Colin to lead us in our beginner section. Take it away, Colin. I would be happy to. Now, the White Scars are the fifth legion of the original space marines of course part of the first founding they go all the way back to the beginning of the imperium they are one of the premier scouting and hit and run forces in the galaxy definitely the imperium's best by quite the wide margin if i say so myself and rival only by the likes of craft world Sim han and the speed freak orcs in terms of going fast they're based heavily on mongolian imagery such as their chapter master being called the great khan and Jagatai, their Primarch, having Khan in his name. And while many outsiders might view them as basically just Mongolian-favored space wolves, so stupid, uncultured, brutish, dumb barbarians do not like space wolves, uh, any amount of investigation shows them to be intellectuals that are skilled in the arts. Poetry, calligraphy, just to name a few. They've got more going for them than just fast. They're quite cultured. I think, uh, I think that's like their big appeal if you read a lot of their books their big appeal is like they like oh we knew all along that we weren't cultured but they they misinterpreted they're definitely like the most underestimated of all the legions and everyone pays for it when they underestimate them Mm -hmm. on uh back in the early days of the imperium on terra when the imperium was just part of terra and not much else they served the emperor as a scouting force during the unification wars And this caused them to become very good at hit-and-run tactics. Early on, granted, this was because they had little choice but to become adept at these tactics. As a lot of the time deployed as scouting forces, they were behind enemy lines, outnumbered and outgunned. While yes, they're still space marines and probably going to crush whatever's in their path. When it's a thousand to one, you've still got to get creative, space marine or not. And the White Scars learned how to do so. Once Jagged Eye was found, this was much the same. Though, this time, granted, this was because they had a learned expertise in such actions, and it favored how their Primarch liked to fight as well. They also were rather reclusive. Uh, Jagatai was not super close with many of his brothers, similar to how the White Scars weren't understood by a lot of other legions. Uh, he became known as the Kagan, the Khan of Khans, and captains of the White Scars were just regular Khans. You've got Khan... And then just for you, Hal, there's Daddy Daddy Connie. Oh, God. I, I, I appreciate that as much as I hate that, too, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> Cargo no see. There's a lot of con. I feel like it's almost, it's almost okay. confusing at some time, at some points, because I always think there's a lot of cons. It's like, mm. it's like everyone, if everyone here has watched um, uh, any football, the right football i'm just going to say it now the right kind of football it's like watching the icelandic uh football team where they all have the same last name i think i think i noticed it in the euro they were like they're all magnuson and it it like broke <laughs> me a little bit they all got like sun at the end like magnuson heinerson i know it's really like, that, sun, sun, I, sun, sun, there's sun. a lot of cons though there's a lot of cons like they're all pretty mm. much i because i when i first heard about them i thought it was like they're all I thought Khan was reserved, obviously, as a very yeah, big I, I think, thing. I think a lot of people assume that they're all called Khans, but they're not. It's only Captain sort of rank uh, mm. White Scars that get the honorific of Khan. Uh, but mm. because they're pretty much the only named characters a lot of the time, I think everyone assumes that every White Scar is called something Khan. But we'll go into that a bit later. All I know is that the euro is less valuable than the dollar, so you call it soccer. Oh, yeah. I don't nice. use the euro in my country. <laughs> <laughs> Do I? <laughs> no. 
Oh. Uh, I can't speak about the Canadian dollar. So... <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Anyway, uh, to, to, to get back to the, to the white scars. Sorry, not insulting the entire continent. <laughs> <laughs> People. Rightful. Back to the white scars. Uh, USA. Anyway. Jagatai mixed the Terran and Chagoran soldiers together in battle to foster unity, as early on the Terrans and those recruited from Chagoris, Jagatai's homeworld, didn't get on super well, but he forced them to fight together, and you learn under fire pretty quick to suck up your grievances and make friends. And always, uh, pardon me, going forward to the Horus Heresy after the Great Crusade, they had always been this outside force, kind of like I was saying earlier. So, initially, they didn't really know what was going on with the Horus Heresy. They were always deployed at the edge of the Imperium's advances as scouting forces, first contact, and early strike forces during the Great Crusade. So when Horus threw his little temper tantrum, they had no idea what was going on, essentially. All they knew was that their former brother-in-arms were going at each other like madmen. Mm. As they investigated Prospero after it was burned, a sizable portion threw their lot in with Horus as they believed it was a right for rebellion. Because mm. as far as a lot of them were concerned, the Space Wolves just went to town on the Thousand Suns, and that was the side Horus was on. So as far as they were concerned, Horus is in the right. When mm. Jagatai got some more info and learned that actually there was some chaos treachery going on, the remaining traitors, Marines, and the White Scars either just submitted to be executed or join suicide squads to find honor in death. Anytime there's something like that, I find it really cool. Like the Dwarf Slayers, the, yeah, the, the Magyar so squads. Epic. It's very, very cool. Very Warhammer. Ironically as well, if I don't know if this is a bit a bit jump in the gun, but I think, as we said earlier, the Terrans and the Jagorians were kind of reunited. Ironically, it wasn't quite a big portion of the ones that sided with Horus, they were the Terran born white scars. So that so that definitely came to a a bit of a heated moment yeah. <laughs> to say that yeah. they yeah, were there's, there's always like that weird dynamic with legions with Terran borns and like are they gonna be goodies? Are they gonna be a bit cheeky, you know? Like, there's always a weird dynamic in certain legions like the Raven Guard in particular. Mm-hmm. Uh after they finally figure out which side to be on they perform very admirably, uh, raiding Horus's legions and the traitor legions in general for several years. But eventually they came to realization that if they keep doing that, they were going to be caught, cornered, and destroyed. So while there was still an opening, they booked it to Terra, where they performed admirably during the siege, protecting Ter Terra's civilian population and even helping their Primarch banish Mortarian himself back to the warp after he became a demon Primarch. They got rid of the oh, smelly so cool. one. They got rid of the smelly one. Uh, <laughs> they mm. totally did. It is an awesome. It's it's in the. I think one of the better Siege of Terror books. Uh, oh my god! I almost Warhawk. I almost got the name. That would have been a massive law crime. <laughs> <laughs> it's right on the tin. So yeah, that, yeah, that oh. book is in. That book is long. I say long, brethren. But it's that's a it's a and beefy it's one. Good. One of the best Jagatai moments with him. Just. Um, so cool just shouting down Mortarian with sick burns, like, yep, that's our Khan, we love him. We'll tackle some of that later, I think, a bit, because I can't wait to go into that part. <laughs> uh, as, uh, now, this did cost Jagadai his life, although he was given to Malkator to be healed, resurrected, which, unless old lore is very shortly going to be retconned, this is, to my knowledge, Jagadai's state of things. After the siege, he is back and kicking. You can't keep the Warhawk down. Uh, as for that, after the Siege of Terra, uh, Jagatai at some point was lost chasing Dark Eldar ba raiders back into the webway. I gotta say, Jagatai is very cool. Andy, I know you love the White Scars. Would, yep. would, uh, would not have chosen this as a viable course of action. Pursuing the Drukari back into Kamara. Mm, uh, I don't know, Khan will manage, he'll be fine. Uh, I'm sure, yeah, I'm sorry. It's I'm not sure he's, 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 I'm sure he's alive uh, in the tender, loving hands of the Drukhari. Yikes. Uh, if, if, he's uh, taking them out. We'll undoubtedly get to them later, but just uh, so you know, if they don't want you in Kamara, you're not going to have a good time. 
Hey, if uh, if Eli's favorite, Mr. Fabius the Chad Bile, can survive in Comoran, uh, I'm pretty sure he was Khan. invited. Yeah, he, I, don't, I don't think well, the Khan was invited. Fine. Was he invited, Eli? Oh, the Harlequins gave him a map, and then he went there, and the uh, homunculi Covens actually like took him in as a student because he's like, oh, this guy's pretty cute, and he's really smart. This guy's pretty cute. He's, he's, pretty cute. he's, like, he's really the smartest guy in Fabius the galaxy. Ooh, Fabius they, Boyle Uwu. Yeah, well they, they treat, him like, a, Fabio yeah, they treat him like a kid. Because to them, he's like, uh, like... They're way older than him, right? A lot of the homunculus have been around since the fall, pretty much. Mm -hmm. it's, know, it's, so. it's wholesome in my mind, but... In reality, <laughs> he, it's really not over. wholesome. He's, yeah. Yeah, he screws like, them over really hard. It's like I'm sure the, the experiments that were like taken in aren't having a good time with them. Yeah. Like, yeah. we don't find it cute. We don't. We're not. No. <laughs> uh, Help, we let should, us free, please. We, we then... should get back on track before I talk more about <laughs> yeah. this file. Wait, did they make? Wait, last thing though, did they make like the Tower of Flesh or something? Oh, <laughs> yeah, mean, they so did. Cool. Oh my gosh, they did so do that. Cool. That's a yeah. Oh. Cool. I think that. I think they can move it as well. I'm pretty well, sure. Like, does it have hands underneath? And all it... Oh, okay. I mean, that's not good. Hands, hands <laughs> legs, whatever you got to get around with. Oh, oh. I, I, there was something really cool about it, but I can't remember. Frick. Well, uh, well, Eli's. Oh, it was growing. I think it was growing. That was the thing they did oh, with yeah. it. It wasn't. It wasn't created like from scratch. It was literally growing. I'm pretty sure. That might be correct. I'm moving, be moving there. on, yeah, <laughs> please. I'm my Solan SG, uh, my Solan SG deviants out of here. Oh, go Dildar. Uh, anyway, <laughs> after after this though, the White Scars never failed in their duty, and even with their Primarch gone and their Legion split into chapters, with what they had after the siege, the White Scars continued their role as the Imperium's outriders, even at their reduced strength, and they always performed admirably. And this is how they have done for 10,000 years, and how they will always do. While they are still seen as reclusive and mysterious by much of the Imperium, they've never once failed in their duty. They've battled the Red Corsairs, Traitorous Astartes, the Tau alongside a Rogue Trader dynasty. There's a 40k book I actually have read, the Rogue Trader Omnibus. <laughs> yeah, uh, put, put in the points now. <laughs> <laughs> And many more enemies besides. And while they, as I said, remain outsiders, they're not known to many, even among their brother Astartes by this point. Not much is known about them, that is. They're still one of the Emperor's finest and will continue to serve admirably until the end of the Imperium. Big round of applause. A big bow. I, yeah. liked, I, I love the White Scars after reading their, their heresy books. Oh, they're so good. Chris mm. Wright is a he, he's a he's probably the best author they have now at GW. It took him a while to like we need to like talk about the white scars. They're not getting any and it's like oh here we go. Oh, amazing. Thank you. Thank you cuz like we for like the first 20 books they don't really get anything and then it's like ah now we're getting something to talk about after a long time. Feels the same with the Blood Angels. I might be yeah. wrong with that, but I'm like 30 books in and they haven't talked about the Blood Angels still so <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm currently on um, Ruin Storm, so they're getting a bit of love right, like right, right now with that. But still, to be fair, Sanguinius's time in the sun comes at the end. <laughs> yeah, Rest sorry, Fulgrim's place. prettier than him, anyways. Ooh. Oh, we have fighting words here. <laughs> fighting words. Right, comment, comment in the in the uh, below the video. Who's prettier, Sanguinius or Fulgrim? We'll do a poll. <laughs> Fulgrim's all natural, baby. He's all natural beauty. Sanguinius is, needs some wings. The answer is Leela Pesperex. Ah, boo, boo! Oh dear! Get him out of here! No, it's Marathi. <laughs> oh, oh, that's even on. worse. That's <laughs> even worse. <laughs> uh, are there uh, any questions for the beginner section before Andy takes it away? I don't have a. I don't have a question. I have more of a, like, general statement of like, because obviously rip. you you were. Uh, Obviously, you, you, I won't say you're a filthy 40k only, not a heresy boy, but, but you're like kind of, even to you, like, do the White Scars feel pre, like, you're not, like, even, obviously they're intended to be quite mysterious, and they were for, like, the longest time, to be more, more neglected than mysterious. <laughs> <laughs> mysterious um, is a great way to justify neglected. <laughs> yes, but, like, even to you, like, because obviously you learn about them now, I think every time someone learns about them, they quickly become, like, 
someone like at least like top five if you know what i mean like would you say for yourself like having learned more about them through this you're like oh they've risen like quite a bit uh they've, they've definitely gone up there i don't know if i'd say top five but that's less because i don't think they're cool and more because i've just honestly never thought about like top five space marine chapters this guy uh, can name about three of them I I, <laughs> <laughs> no i've got a few I like the Reclaimers. From Granted, that's because they were in Caiaphas Cain and anything related uh, to him I love. <laughs> uh, but no, I've, I've got a few I know. But uh, they're definitely up there now. Again, like I said, I'd have to think about that if I want to put together a list. But yeah, I'm a, I do enjoy me, reading me about the White Scars. Do or uh, don't White Scars is coming to your channel 100% uh, uh, after yeah, this. Is, uh, I wouldn't say right after On this. Is it the first Space Marine video? Uh, first, Space Marines is going to be overall Space Marines, and then we'll get into specifics. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> after, you haven't, after, you after, haven't after. done Space Marines yet? No, I was. Uh, I thought about. I, I think that's going to be. All right, we're getting too much into my channel. Too too much ahead. That'll that'll be just real quick. That'll be the uh, that'll be my final do or don't for the mainline armies. I felt like that'd be a fitting capstone to the series mm, until, very much until so. I get into sub armies because I need to milk it. <laughs> <laughs> Damn right. Uh, and if there's nothing else, Andy, mm -hmm. unless Eli, have you anything, questions, any comments? Uh, I don't think so. I'm sure Andy will cover plenty. All right. Andy, why don't you take away the expert section of uh, the White Scars? Thank you very much for hand handing it over. You've done a great job with the intro. Uh, I think, again, like Hal just mentioned, anyone who hears about more, the more you hear about the White Scars, I think the cooler they get. Um, but we'll start at the beginning with their formation. So... The, uh, when the, the legions were founded, a lot of them had specializations and different names. For example, the Death Guard were the Dusk Raiders at the time. Uh, the White Scars, when they were originally founded, were called the Star Hunters. Um, they were comprised primarily from the Fulian Basin of Terra. And at, at their inception, there was only really a few hundred warriors. Uh, they were known as the Eyes and Ears of the Unification War because they would... They were they were used as pathfinders and scouts uh you you know and it, it makes sense uh when you think of white scars you think they get in they get out they're not quite like the raven guard who are more uh espionage and covert operations but they do have that element of hit hit fast get in get out guerrilla warfare sort of thing going on um they often fought ahead of the prototype legions so what would happen is if you had say the the dark angels who, who's the first legion the white scars would go into a, an engagement cripple as much of the main enemies uh structures uh high value targets etc and then quickly escape before the dark angels would come in and just sledgehammer crush anything that was left so they were very good at just picking off targets hitting retreating and being so fast you you wouldn't have a chance to attack back um they were also sent into the cumulatively the single most deadly engagements and environments of old earth like anything that was tough you sent the scars in first they do the damage they could and then another legion would come in and, and wipe the floor with whatever was left standing so i kind of like that as well that like even before they were known for the 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 the, the chagorian uh customs and everything they were still pretty badass even before jagatai got involved i wonder if they um, imply I don't know if everyone else feels like this. Do they imply that each legion, like it's always in Warhammer, isn't it? Where like each legion's kind of already like their Primarchs. So it's like, yeah. yeah. Is there meant they, to be like, like a, a sorry, like, they a, have like the a, genetic materials from the Primarchs, don't they? They still have them. They just haven't matured yet. The Primarchs, have, but they've got like they don't have but, daddy yet. But I always <laughs> wondered like what genetically is like genetically make you fast but tactics fast <laughs> like like oh yeah i was born to use fast tactics not i'm run faster because warhammer is a fantasy setting in space yeah. that's that's basically the answer for every question <laughs> when the emperor was getting the primarchs from the warp on their essence he was like oh this is oh this is quite hard to like oh he keeps running away oh he's slipping out of my hands oh get a last two. primarch and then make some gene seed out of that and it's like we've got speedies speedy boys yeah <laughs> i don't like that sentence get some primarch make some gene seed i really hate that <laughs> I, like, <laughs> I like to imagine he kept just dropping jagged eyes like 
pod when he was incubating. Like, oh. So he was like, well, I guess this is my hit and run guy because I cannot get yeah. hold of this slippery little bastard. Yeah, or he just looks away and he's moved and he's behind a table and you're like, oh, come here. Where are you going? You are in a it's pod. How around. are you moving? <laughs> um, and yeah, they, they also said that with the uh, unification era, the, the White Scars only followed orders from the Emperor and commanders they respected. If you tried to command them and they didn't like you, they wouldn't listen to you. They wouldn't do what you said. So they already had a bit of a rebellious streak, but they weren't a, a big um, mistake people make with the White Scars is they say, oh, they're just like, you know, even in the universe, they say they're undisciplined, they're just, you know, these savage. It's like, no, they, were re they are really disciplined. They're really good at following orders, but they don't give, uh, they don't, you know, it's that whole thing, respect is earned, it's not given. And that's especially true with the White Scars. Um, amongst the, the legions that were on Terra, obviously as Pathfinders, they were, the White Scars were amongst the first to leave the planet. Um, they were cast into the absolute furthest uh, flung areas of the galaxy. And because they were used as scouts, not much of their deeds during uh, the, the Great Crusade, or prior to Jagatai anyway, is recorded. Um, because again, they're all over the place. Uh, an interesting fact is the White Scars were the, um, the legion that found Caphonia. Uh, Captain Cornelius Dewar of the Pioneer Company surveyed the planet, and he called it a nest of serpents coiling in the dark that we, we, be, we would be better to destroy. Uh, which apparently Horus was really happy with that quote, and he loved that. Like, ah, oh, this white scar said sh we should have blown up my home planet. Lol. <laughs> Hindsight's twenty twenty now. <laughs> yeah. Um, just a, a nice little tidbit, and you know, uh, I'll, I'll go into it a bit later. But the uh, the white scars and sons of Horus got on well, very famously. Um, Could have saved a lot of trouble if they just hit that exterminatus button on the planet. <laughs> like the Among Us button, isn't it? You call everyone for a meeting and just, mm. <laughs> just, just destroy that little disgusting serpent bowl of a planet. Because of this, their fleet was heavily fragmented prior to the Legion's reunification with uh, Jagatai Khan. And uh, even though they slowly, eventually lost numbers, you know, they, they had casualties, they had diminishing uh, amounts of units, they never once asked for any help. They're very proud. They never asked any of the legions for backup or reinforcements. They never pestered the emperor. They were like, we're, we've been given a job. We're going to go do it. That's all. Um, and they would do this for 50 years before they would find uh, Jagatai Khan on his homeworld of Chagoris. Now, Chagoris was actually known, or is actually known amongst the Imperium, as uh, Mundus Planus. Um, and it would be discovered by the Emperor and Horus Lupercal. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll one day be doing a, a video on Jagatai Khan, I'm sure, because he's too cool not to do a video on specifically. Um, I won't go into too much, but when Jagatai conquered Chagoris and he united all the tribes. He was already uh, not an emperor like Dawn or, or Gilliman, but he was, a, he was a warlord, he was a conqueror, he had everything under control. And when he saw the, the emperor backed up by the lunar wolves and he saw them in their you know, white armor with the, the black trim, he said, ah, right, okay, <laughs> that's a foe I can't beat. Like, that thing there is terrifying and also I kind of want my warriors to be like that. So he kind of realized, oh, I am no longer going to be the, the conqueror of, of anything. I, I'm no longer going, going to go out and conquer anything I desire. My father, the emperor, that's his role. But I'm going to be free from the constraints of bureaucracy and boring politics. And I can just serve in his name, go out there with my, with my boys, kill lots of stuff, have some fun. And just be untethered because he's very Jagatai is the most free spirited of all the Primarchs. He just wants to go out there and and slay some Xenos, you know. Isn't it interesting that of all, I think him and maybe Angron might be the only ones who like didn't immediately pledge loyalty to the Emperor. Mm. Like a lot of them are described to. I think the one with like Perturabo, isn't it? I always remember that one. Like Perturabo, like basically gets on his knees and starts wading like a baby. <laughs> so the Sagridius. Yeah, yeah, a lot. I think a lot of them did that. I think, I think Fulgrim you know, also was just like, oh yeah, cool. I'm I think Fer 
Ferris had a scrap with him, didn't he? Yeah, Ferris <laughs> had a punch up, which is awesome. But, as well, yeah, like he Ferris. had a Dragon Ball Z fight with the Emperor. <laughs> <laughs> His powers over nine thousand, and, <laughs> and then Vulcan. We're gonna go hunting and see who's better at hunting. Hmm. Okay, Dad. It, <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's interesting, isn't it? That Jagatai is one of the few ones who like don't Im- mm. like a lot of them. Like, even when they say like when humans meet Primarchs, they immediately want to like bend the knee, so mm. almost. And it's interesting that Jagatai. I guess didn't feel that, whereas a lot of the other Primarchs immediately felt that. So yeah. maybe that was something born into him. Yeah, I know. I think the old law, it, it, or, or at least um, I don't know if it's old law necessarily, or if it's just the Imperium's records where he 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 went to his knees and he groveled. It's like no, that's just what they said. What he actually did is he looked at Horus, he looked at his soldiers, and went, "We're going to get slaughtered if we stand against them." Then again. That armor's pretty cool. I'm going to join you, and we're going to go out and do what we love doing anyway. So why not? And he and and his his whole um, premise was he wanted humanity to conquer the stars and 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 rule the galaxy. And he was like, well, if the emperor's going to do it, it's still he's still doing what I want to do. So cool. Okay, I'm a man enough to say I can't match the emperor. He's my daddy. I'll do as he says because you know I, I believe in what he wants to do, and I think. It'd be better to join him and and get it done quicker. That's kind of his whole his whole um outlook, uh, with the legions. Um, I think my uh, go ahead. Just a quick, my favorite uh, meeting the emperor story is still Lehman Russ's old lore, where it was an <laughs> eating contest and the emperor yeah. lost, and then a drinking contest. And the that's emperor still lost. canon. That's that's a hundred percent still canon. canon? Yeah. Oh, I, I think it still is. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and then he just and then the emperor's like, in "Are the you face? Gonna yeah. just suck your face and get drunk? You're." A wretched person he's like what did you say <laughs> the, 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 in the, the fact that the, em- the emperor lost as well like twice yeah. he lost in the drinking and the eating contest yeah which is insane because he's the em- yeah, he's not emperor stomach isn't he he's not emperor yeah. stomach <laughs> so to go back to the legion proper rather than just talking about how cool jagatai is um so all the plains tribes of chagoris were then given mandatory military service um, and what's interesting, another, I say, we're going to talk about the wider thing without talking about Jagatai. Another cool thing about Jagatai, um, he was amongst the swiftest of all the Primarchs to be given his legion and then to just go to war. Like, uh, Gilliman and Dawn particularly protested, like, they were like, he's literally, we've just found him. You can't give him a fleet. You can't give him all these warriors and just say, go ham. But the Emperor did, and they didn't like how... Um, Jagatai didn't assimilate all of the imperial virtues that the other Primarchs were told to foster. Um, it's not necessarily um, a religious thing, but the, the White Scars have their own cultural ideals. And so Jagatai kind of said, I like these things from the Imperium, but this stuff's rubbish, so I'm going to keep the stuff from my Chagorian culture as like, uh, virtues to aspire to for my legion. So that's another thing with uh, with Jagatai. He was just given given the keys to the, to to conquer the galaxy in the name of the emperor very quickly. Um, actually, but when he too. Hmm? actually using his brain too, like hey, not everything's yeah. perfect with the Imperium. Yeah. Also, probably the is there any other Primarch who was more um, who challenged the ideals of the Emperor more than Jagatai? I mean, Angron wasn't happy, but he didn't really have much to talk about. He was just like, oh, my friends are dead. <laughs> there was a nice conversation with uh, the Khan and Sanguinius, I think, in Warhawk, where they were just, like, talking about how the whole Imperial truth is a, is a sham and, like, completely fake, but, oh, well, it could be worse, and let's follow Dad anyways, mm-hmm. is basically what I got the gist of it, which is probably another reason why he's my favorite. Closest Ted- I can... I'll go ahead, Colin. The closest I can think of is when Mortarian started fighting about the webway and was like, there's some warp stuff going on here, Dad. Something's not right. That's not really questioning the Imperium. That's just like, hey, Dad is screwing with the warp with the Golden Throne. Something's not up. Malkador's lying to me. I was going to say technically Lorgar because he, he technically got it all oh, yeah. wrong. <laughs> you know what I mean? In, in the right uh, way. Yeah, he, he technically was way off. <laughs> yeah, he'd read the instructions of the previous essay and then he tried to apply yeah. it to this current one and it was not right <laughs> or was it oh that's yeah, a good question heresy good question. detected we're moving on we're moving on oh i think oh, okay, i will say i did like how jagatai didn't let he like didn't let the imperium touch his planet pretty much mm. he's like screw you 
You're not putting a single factory on my planet. Yeah, basically. no Mechanicum was awesome. messing around. No, this is my home. You are not that touching That was probably it. half the reason why the Dark Angels turned straighter. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, don't touch me there. This is my Chagoras there. Yeah. <laughs> my Chagoras. Oh, <laughs> if, uh, if, if, you, if you harm a, a, a single blade of grass on my fields, I will go ballistic. I swear, um, I'm going to lose it. <laughs> there will not be a Forge world in this segmentum if you touch yeah. a single tree. Um, but yeah, so... So when Jagatai took control of uh, the the legion, um, it was it was divided. They didn't expect to find any of the Primarchs when they did. They just sort of bumped into them when they did, and so all of his ver varying uh, fleets have gone all over the galaxy. And so when Jagatai is found, he basically sends a signal to all of them saying, "Everyone, I'm your dad. Come home this instant." So they all do. And it takes them quite a few years. I, I did have it written down somewhere, but I can't find exactly where it is. But it is a while. Isn't it 10, uh, oh, here we 10 go. years? Or it took 100 years, I think. Oh. 100, 100 for all the pioneer companies to come back to Chagoris, from what I can read here. Anyway. 100? I thought it was like That's 10 what years. I read. Is I it? Thought it was, I thought it was like, well, not, it was like, like 10 years to gather all these stars. It's that like 10 called? years in space marine time, though. <laughs> I think because 100 years, they would have been near the end of the great crusade <laughs> i can't i think i thought it was 10 years if i read in, mm, I in the jagatai khan book i think it, it, it might be 100 here yeah, i might be wrong it, it's, it's either 10 years i'm sure the great crusade is several hundred isn't it a few hundred years where like 200 you know, years in total yeah uh, but either way if it's i feel like it's 100 just because again they were literally the furthest out in the galaxy and some of them were like sorry dad we're quite far away. I'm not going to be home before like ten. Uh, <laughs> I'll get if we, if we get it wrong, it's a it's a it's a happy law crime anyway. It's a happy they, law. They, they were far away. Like they were far. They were very far. Um, but what he did was when all the Astartes mustered at Chagoris, he had about fifty thousand, and there was because a lot of them were from Terra, and they'd just been like recruiting and uh, training up the Chagorian Astartes as well. Also because they'd been all over the galaxy, none of them had any shared culture. Some were, you know, on the Eastern Front, the Western Front, some were from Chagora, from, some were from Chet Terra and different tribes amongst the Terrans. And so what Jagatai did is he said, okay, we're going to do this thing called the Blooding, or it's also known as the Ascension of the White Scars. And he told all of his uh, Astartes, grab a knife, you're going to cut a scar on your face, basically from uh some some from temple to jaw some from cheek to jaw like you need to scar your face as a way for us all to have a common heraldry under my banner and over time these scars would um show different differentiate how you know if you have like a say a cut from your your right cheek to your your lip that's one brotherhood or if it's one over your left eye that's another and so they would match them so you could tell what brotherhood they were from over time but originally it was just Okay, that's my uh, my little uh, transformation. And every Astartes also relinquished their old name, and they, they picked a new one. Um, there weren't any rules as to what you had to call yourself. Like, it wasn't... Although a lot of Chagorian uh, Astartes used Chagoris and its, uh, its, its her uh, lineage as a way to, to derive new names, this wasn't mandatory. And uh, for the first generation of the White Scars, a lot of them named themselves after their deeds in battle. And over time, as the Terran Astartes dwindled and more Chagorian Astartes were assimilated into the chapter, they named themselves to honor the Kargan and also to honor Chagoris. So over time, patterns would emerge on how they would be called. Like, for example, um, Jubal Khan was uh, in the Horus Heresy. But there's also the current chapter master in the 41st millennium is also called Jubal Khan, which is quite confusing. But I think it's a way for him to honor the, the Lord of Summer Lightning who died in the Horus Heresy. And so there's like repeated names and all that kind of stuff. You know, you um, said they, they're named after deeds. I've just had the unholy rogue idea that some white scar is called 360 no scope in Chagorian <laughs> <laughs> or like you know or just like or throwing knife across the map if you know what I mean yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. His, his sacred name translates to 1v1 me on rust <laughs> <laughs> this is my honored battle brother 1v1 me on rust <laughs> just... actually that sounds like um oh what's the uh 
it was what's, what's the DLC for um Fallout with uh, Joshua Graham in it and they have all those oh, tribal oh. names and it yeah. you know what I'm talking about something hearts something hearts um, honest hearts honest hearts something like that. I think it's that DLC the the tribesmen have something similar yeah. don't they they have like like honest wounded knee or something. Yeah. I think that's to be honest, it. I, I, when you said about the whole like 360, I was just thinking kill Tacular Khan or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Running riot. Running riot <laughs> Khan. God, man, uh, that's amazing. That DLC. So silly. Oh, that DLC was also 250 megabytes. Remember when games were under Ooh. a gig? Yeah. Jesus Christ. Ooh, Do you remember playing really Skyrim fun. on your PS3 back in the day, boys? Yeah, <laughs> playing Skyrim. Yeah, now what did we play it on? We played it on the toaster. Oh. <laughs> Skyrim for Samsung smart fridge. I think Skyrim's going to be released tomorrow if we actually check our <laughs> calendar because they're releasing it again. <laughs> they're going to release oh, it until 40k becomes real life. Literally. It's never dying. We're going to have servitors by the time Skyrim's done. That's why, that's why Jagged Icon was really an outsider. He preferred Oblivion. <laughs> I, I, I love Oblivion. I gotta say, I think I prefer Oblivion too. To play it. I do have a quick question with the scarring. Because obviously mm -hmm. they're space marines. I can't remember how they managed um, to do the skull. They use it. like healing. I think they use a poison. They 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 use like a poison on their blades so that it stops the healing process. Ah. So it it kind of burns. I think I think even the Khan did this, but because of his healing factor, it's so subtle you can't really see it. I know he's got the big red uh, pattern on his forehead, but I thought that was more like war paint than an actual. Or is it a tattoo? Or hmm. I'm just, not sure about that, actually. It's just a bachelor weekend mistake. <laughs> <laughs> sort of thing. Um, but yeah. Um, and basically, the Khan, uh, similar to what I said earlier about how he didn't quite uh, assimilate everything from the Imperium into the White Scars, he told his sons to study, to, to study the noble pursuits. And this is similar to the Blood Angels, where they had, like, they were taught to indulge in the arts. Um, the White Scars were told, you know, do, do hunting, tell stories of your heritage and tales from Chagoras and do calligraphy and honor your, your heritage um, as a way to, as something to aspire to be better at than just fighting, even though the White Scars love a good fight. Um, Lorgar Aurelian, everyone's least favorite Primarch. Um, uh, I like him, I like him. Mm. I like how evil he, I like how pathetic and evil he is. Because you can only it's like, <laughs> I like, I like the first word. I like him because he's pathetic. <laughs> well, it's like how everyone you love to hate Erebus, isn't it? The, yeah. If Ere, if everyone was like Erebus, oh, that's pretty meh. But everyone's like, if someone said, "Oh man, you look like you're the kind of an Erebus character today," you, you'd actually want to like just destroy <laughs> it's fight all mode. of their favorite. Yeah, yeah, you had the fight. <laughs> it's just a straight up fight. There's no Same thing with Lorgar. Mm. Mm. There's well, no, well, definitely no flight. I mean, being pre-heresy Lorgar would be too bad. He was a good guy. Yeah, Lorgar's cool. Uh, he just he was a bad rep from guys like Major Kill, and so now everyone hates him. Oh, to be uh, fair, he was but raised by Corbett. He's meant to be. He's meant to be hated, though. He, he is a. Mm. He, he does have I his sigma. Uh, he has his quote-unquote sigma grind set moment. I where think he's like, one of his hate is unjustified. I mean, he's he, a was, character. he was a prick. But what we can agree on that. Like what Conrad can agree on what that. Primark wasn't at some point. Really? Mm. Vulcan and the Sanguinous. Eldar Child. I, the Vulcan yeah, and yeah, the Eldar yeah. Child. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, anyways. Um, so we just derailed this completely. Um, but yeah, either way, Lorgar uh, hated the noble pursuits. He saw them as a rejection of the imperial truth, and so he whinged at the he whinged to the emperor about it a lot. And he's like, "Jackie Ty is doing that thing again." You're like, "Shut up, Lorgar. Log no one cares." Um, whereas Rabute Gilliman said he he found it suspicious and unworthy. So he also didn't like them, but not in the same way, which is a bit mean. Um, so that's kind of the the history of them up to Jagatai. Uh Before I go into some of the the ways that they uh some of the more information about what they were like i've got some quotes in the right hand side of the chat and i'm wondering if you guys would like to read a quote each so um hmm, what could we start with um which flavor do you want first <laughs> okay uh does anyone want to uh to to do the first one with torgan khan at the top Is i'll go i don't mind going i actually i like the character of torgan as well i hope we talk about him in a bit because he's pretty interesting uh, Tor Torgan just—he's—he's he's the Terran-born one, isn't he? As well. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'll give him a little. <clears throat> Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> the Tagorian instructors were fulsome in their praise 
unlike the grudging hard men of the lunar wombs. Take pleasure in your prowess, they would chide him, mocking his earnestness. A warrior is a blessed thing, the most fortunate of creatures, gifted by the heavens with unmatched power. It would, it would be polite to acknowledge that from time to time. They're very much they, they no hang ups about fighting. They they pretty much were just like, yeah, what why are you being a little bit of a bitch? Just enjoy it. Enjoy <laughs> enjoy fighting. <laughs> Have a bit of fun when you're killing people. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't don't be such a don't be such a downer, man. What are you doing, man? Yeah, yeah. Lighten the mood. So um with that said, uh, they during the later parts of their um their uh, their time in the Great Crusade, etc. They they began to eventually recruit exclusively from Jagoris, and they were the third smallest legion during the the Great Crusade. The only legion smaller were the Raven Guard and the Salamanders. Um, they loved jet bikes uh, due, due to their nomadic time on Jagoris uh, on the plains, and also the history of of trying to get from the most far flung place as quickly as possible. They like speed. They like raiding. They like you know. They like things that go super quick. And similar to that quote before, they were known as the laughing killers because they would strike fast without mercy and they were they would always enjoy battle. They always had a bit of fun when they were doing it. Uh, Sanguinius, Primarch of the Blood Angels, remarked, they smile often and they laugh when they kill. Which is like, oh, Sangi. He, he, he had a soft spot for the, the White they, Scouts. They loved fighting orcs didn't they though that's oh, the, yeah. was it the, the irony was like them versus the orcs everyone was having a good time <laughs> it was just ridiculous yeah, they, they, they were sent to to end the orcs after the ulanor campaign like the just before the horus heresy broke out um i think it was horus who was like finish off the orcs go to um what was the planet called uh oh i can't remember what it was what it's called but they went to like their last known stronghold and he was like khan could you just like go like massacre them could you just genocide the rest of the orcs and he was like yep cool no worries um there's a good uh the first story in um i think it's war without end the uh the couple of short stories is about um shiban khan and Torgan khan and stuff and yeah that's quite a good story about like the last fight before they ended the orcs for the uh the great crusade um i think it was hal and colin mentioned earlier that they're often maligned as savage killers akin to the space wolves or world eaters but in actual fact, they are amongst the most capable strategists of all the legions, and they are very disciplined. Uh, they are very courteous to the people they meet, if not adherent to the rules that are imposed on them. So, that you know, there's like a, a, a Terran-born general who also is in the book I mentioned earlier, who I think is assimilated into the legion when she's working with them to, to kill the orcs. And their uh, targetai Yesuge Yusuge is like, oh, I'm gonna like give you warning, like the, the Khan's a bit intimidating, but I'm gonna help you get used to him. And uh, they're always quite polite and nice to people. Um, there's even a story where uh, the the traitor, the loyalists from traitor legions, are trying to get back to Holy Terror under Mesa Varan, and a custodies is there. And there's like the Emperor's children loyalists. There's the world eaters under Mace of Aaron, and there's a few white scars. And the only one that the uh, custody respects is the white scars because he's fought with them in the past. And he's like, Oh, I like these guys, these guys are cool. Uh, which is a bit unfortunate because they betray him. Uh, but oh well, we'll get round to that later. Um, so they also had immensely big, uh, great bonds of friendship with the Lunar Wolves uh, because Horus and Jagatai, they weren't like sanguineous and horus levels of like trust and friendship or ferris manus and fulgrim but they were really really close uh not only because horus was the first primarch that jagatai would meet and he was like the kind of his embodiment of what he would like uh like the example to follow for his legion because he was the first one he saw and you know they're the they were the first among equals uh, when he was the whore, uh, whore master? When he was the whore master. <laughs> when he was the whore master. <laughs> this is the Slanesh episode. Uh, Crusades um, left and right. <laughs> yeah. Um, and also they did a lot of joint, joint campaigns together. Um, they also had um, a really good friendship with the Thousand Sons because Magnus and Jagatai are, were really close because they were both seen as outcasts. And uh, in that regard, they both uh, confided in each other. And... Um, Sanguinius also respected the scars, and I think that was because he saw a shade of like the 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 potential of violence the Blood Angels were capable of as like a kind of similar thing to the White Scars. With you know, when they go hard, they go hard. Um, 
it's and it's actually just saying all those three magnus sanguinius and jagatai they were also bonded by i don't know if you're going to talk about this next i might be jumping the gun but they're all bonded by they were all pro psycho weren't they mm, they were um mm. I'll, I'll get to that in a bit um mm, mm. but before i do i'm, I'm just going to say that there are grudges though um i know colin loves his uh, great book of grudges and <laughs> dwarves retake um, the realms <laughs> um, you filthy grungy. <laughs> grungy. Is, I think that's an ancestor grungy. god. Yes, I know. I'm I'm throwing it out there. You We're getting the fancy. The kill, kill, stunties. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I don't know if, if I'm correct in saying this, but I feel like white scars have amongst the most grudges of all the legions, um, and that's saying something considering the space wolves exist. But. Um, <laughs> Yeah, they don't get on well with the Space Wolves because they see them as barbaric. Is and... it uh, like the Space Wolves are actually the image that a lot of people incorrectly attribute to the White yeah. Stars? Yeah, and, and the so White there is resentment people. because yeah, of that. Like, yeah, they're like, hmm. It's like they're tainting. You, you... Yeah. yeah. Um, they also don't like the Death Guard, and that got worse with the whole, um, you know, Mortarian falling to chaos thing and... Siege of Terror, uh, and they also really don't get like probably of all the legions, they really don't like the Raven Guard. They are really, really, really opposed to the Raven Guard, um, which supposedly of originates from uh, there was a Raven Guard chaplain that fell to the thrall of an enslaver during an operation known as Kronos, and the White Scars could have given their aid but didn't, and apparently that's where like <laughs> this is I'm the 40k exactly sure. timeline, right? This is this is. I think this event's closer towards the yeah yeah, uh, but but uh, they don't really have much dealings during the 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 Horus Heresy period, I think. But you know, finding an enslaver is pretty crazy. But like, I think the idea that the resolve of the chaplain, which is also like a big deal for a legion to have, like a chaplain is supposed to be the most mentally stable of an Astartes lead, uh, chapter, and the fact that he didn't have the the the, the constitution to stop being enslaved by a quote enslaver, they were a bit like hmm bit weak <laughs> and then they just didn't like the raven guard after nice. that <laughs> um, is it also because like their tactics are so like i guess opposite because the the, the white scars don't hide they're, they're in, your, they're in your face guard. yeah your there face. is that as well they think their their combat doctrine is a bit sus do they both um, fight the tau are they both in that conflict yeah there, there is a, an interesting book about uh Kavan shrike and Korosaros khan uh fight together because the the Corsaro Khan's doing a hunt because of course he is he's doing one of his master of the hunt things and he's looking for a target uh, from the Alpha Legion who's like a chaos empowered warlord and he's like he's here and then they go to the planet and Kayvon strikes there of his raven guard and he's like what are you doing here and they're like we're we're just doing something else and he's like all right I get to kill him and I get to cut off his head and bring it back to Chagoras and Kayvon's like fine and then they just ganged up on the the Alpha Legion guy and killed him. Uh, it's quite quite fun. Like, um, like bullies in the schoolyard just kicking him <laughs> in the shins. Yeah, yeah. There's a cool piece um, of artwork from that, at least the Tau bit. I just sent oh, it. Oh, yeah. In. It's really cool imagining them working together like that. Yeah. I like the uh, image of um, Corsaro as well, like just like sm slashing, like it's sort of, like just sm smacking like uh, Shadow Sun in the back, and she's like, ah. <laughs> just, there's this picture of him just like they should have finished gotcha. the job they should have finished the job <laughs> but then, but uh, then where would all the Tau rule 34 come from uh, uh, oh, you like, man. I must end this now Shadows is not that bad actually but she just I mean, I'm not getting we're not going to talk about Tau we're not talking about Tau never mind <laughs> <laughs> yeah Tau Leave episode later obscurity um beyond rule 34 anyway um <laughs> so so during the Horus Heresy like we mentioned before um they they did stay loyal, but there was a warrior lodge in the Legion, because of course some of them were the warrior lodges. For anyone who hasn't read the books, were basically ways for the for the war master and um, elements of chaos before the war master became corrupted to sow the seeds of doubt and to go. We're all brothers. We're all fighting together, and our our loyalty is above the emperor. Wink, wink. Slowly, slowly getting uh getting ahead of themselves and um some of them like uh hasik khan i believe it is um sided with horus and like i said earlier when he was on the uh ship with uh, mesa varan and the emperor's children the custodian and garrow and some other guys uh, i think it's tylos rubio they were like hey you're from traitor legions 
apart from the white scars. We're not letting you in to Terra until we like check you're okay. That you're not gonna like do anything shifty. And Hasik was so sneaky, he pinned like he 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 got his men to wear Emperor's children armor, slaughter a bunch of civilians on one of the ships, then blow up the camera that was filming them, then pin it on the Emperor's children, and then before they got caught out, they shot a custod they like ganged up on a cust on the custodian and killed him. And it's like, ooh, white oh, scars. No. You guys when they know what they're doing, they know what they're doing. They just they were traitors. Him. They weren't proper white scars. They were traitor ones. They so no wonder they were ones. sneaky. Jeez. Yeah. And they almost kill um, Garrow and that, but then like they they murder all the Emperor's children. They they basically go, Emperor's children, you have been found to be excommunicate traitorous. We're going to kill you all in the name of the Emperor. Wink. Then they kill all the Emperor's children. Then they kill all the World Eaters. And then Mace of Aaron goes mental, and just because he's a crazy, super good fighter and he's angry, he just like gets the upper hand. Um, and then Garrow eventually sorts them out. I think Hasik uh, escapes though. And um, when Jagatai heard about this, he was very annoyed, but he kind of understood why they did it. He was like, well, we've got good ties to the War Master, and you know I don't 100% agree with the Emperor about everything. Uh, so he punished, uh, he basically gave them the option, I'm going to either have you executed or you redeem yourself in the eyes of the Legion. And I, I, I think, I can't remember... If Hasik was, he made it back to the car. Definitely, a, an Astartes did. He made it back to the car and he said, "No, I, 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 I'll, I'll take responsibility. I did what I did. I still believe what I do. You'll just have to kill me." And he didn't like to do it, but then Jagatai killed a few of them because they were like, "No, I think that I think I, I agree with the horn, uh, with the war master." Sorry. And this is all dead. before, actually, ironically, wasn't it? During yeah, when they're all um, part of the when they're making lodges. their minds up. Yeah. They actually. This is the part where the white scars. They actually don't know. We said earlier, like the the warrior lodges, like that's how chaos like seeped in. But originally, the yeah. warrior lodges are essentially. The funny is they're all just men in cloaks. <laughs> like, um, does anyone know the film Hot Fuzz? Where like they all yes. around, they were like the greater good, the greater <laughs> good <laughs> hack. That's what they. <laughs> that's what they essentially are. And then um, the, the whole point is like they're like places where warriors. Are everyone, everyone's equal in this area, sort of thing. No, no rank. <laughs> basically, yeah. And they all kind of just believe that Horus, like, obviously, there's a lot to comment about the Emperor being a tyrant. So, hmm. and, and they're they like, have, he's earned it. Yeah, he should have a go. Yeah. Why not? So, that's it. So, they actually don't know that like, chaos is involved at this point. They kind of just think it's like, yeah. a, it's just a general coup, like, you know, standard yeah. coup, not chaos, uh, souped up yeah. tentacle. You know, Did infested know. coup. Demons weren't hmm. involved, as far as they knew. Nah, so they're very much their betrayal. Like even above Prospero, when like another group tried to like, they try to force Jagatai, don't they, to like join yeah. Horus, and then he just he, they're all like, this is for the best. You know, Horus is a you know the Emperor's ditched us. The em you know Horus is a better leader because he's actually you know he's a fighting man. And then Jagatai just goes, you you make you make decisions for me. <laughs> just, yeah, it's like you it's did what. You didn't wait for me to tell you what to do. Who are you again? <laughs> yeah, that, that's that's it's the kind me. of that's the kind of that's the fate of the traitorous uh, white scars. Mm. They basically get as soon as they realize that what they they're like, oh, we just wanted to make a, the right choice. You don't make a choice. You're the soldier. Mm. <laughs> so they yeah. got him slapped. Um, but the, yeah, they they and then they when uh, Jagatai was making his mind up, he was confronted by Mortarian. He was confronted by Magnus. Uh, we'll talk more about that on his video, I'm sure. But long story short, he goes, "No, we're going to be loyalists. We're going to go to Terra, and we're going to help out." They, they, for a while, they harassed the traitors and chipped away at them. And at first, they were really good at it. They were just cleaning house. But over time, the Empress Children and Death Guard they started to see the patterns. They got really good at countering the White Scars, and then eventually, they just started harry, uh, harassing them back. So at this point, they go, "Okay." We're, we're at diminishing returns, the war's coming to a close, we've got to get back to Terra. They get stalled by the Alpha Legion, they get stalled by the Death Guard, They and, you know, it takes them a while, and there's a lot of stuff going on with that, um, which we'll get into another time, but they get back to Terra, and they're amongst some of the only Astartes on Terra, because there's not many uh, Legions that actually are there at the last crucial battle. 
everyone knows the Imperial Fists are there, the Blood Angels are there, the Space Wolves originally are there, but before the battle they, they, they bugger off for the most part, you know, they try to head Horus off before he gets to Terra, and the Knights Errant are there, and that's pretty much it, and then it's just the Imperial Army and Titans and stuff like that. So um, they, they, they help defend the, 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 the home world, the throne world, should I say, and they fight with distinction. Dawn isn't really happy with their tactics because he's like, stay in the walls, and they're like, no, and they're just going out and chopping people up on their bikes. Um, walls are cringe. Official statement of <laughs> walls are crimes. cringe. Walls are Get cringe. Bike. They should be Put behind us. On. Yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, they are there when the war is won in the name of the Imperium. And for 70 years after the traitors are pushed back from terror, Jagadai Khan leads the White Scars to, to slowly retake traitor worlds and purge the fleeing forces from the War Master's broken fleets. Um, but when he gets to Chagoras, he finds the sector has been raided by the Dark Eldar, the Drukhari, and his homeworld has barely been holding. Like, Chagoras has been okay, but everywhere else in the system has just been decimated by the, the Dark Eldar because they've seen a chance and they've gone, oh, we're going to do a bit of enslaving. Like, oh no, not again. A little bit um, rolling. Yeah, um, exactly my thoughts. And and you know, I know I know what you said earlier, Conan. Like, not the best idea, but like, look, his people from his homeworld were taken. So Jagatai goes, "No, you don't come to my homeworld, and you take my people. I'm going to get you." So he starts going through the Yasan sector. He purges as many Xenos in his way as he can. Um, he's told about eventually the Codex Astartes and the ruling of like Jagatai. You've got to break up your legion no more legions and he goes <sighs> okay so he he finishes off the yasan cap campaign to reclaim his sector of space then he he divides up his uh legion into chapters and then he takes the remaining white scars chapter to slay the traitor astartes he fights the dark mechanicum heretical mutants whatever's in his way and then eventually he gets to Corusil five and he's pursuing the Dark Eldar who took his people from Jagoris. And, you know, the Archon, the guy in charge, is kind of there standing in front of a webway portal. He, you know, flips the V at Jagatai or something, gets his hackles up, and he goes, Right, I'm not a standard. And then Jagatai goes, Keshig, follow me. And he charges into the webway portal with his first company. And that's the last time we see him. And, um, very sad. Yeah. Very sad, much sad. Don't get me wrong. The, not uh, not blaming the guy for what he did in terms of like justification. Like, oh, believe me, mm. definitely a brave, righteous thing. Just uh, cool, <laughs> cooler heads might have not done that. But that would <laughs> yeah, be not. Then As a women us kind of thing to do. Then jagged eye wouldn't be jagged eye. I mm. I love the uh, just just going back just a very tiny part to the siege of terror just before jagged eye has disappeared. I love. Like when they, when you read a Warhawk and a lot of the books where the White Scars are featured on the Siege of Terror, mm. they're so good because they're like, there's that really. I was just going to touch like just a very cool part about the White Scars, which is it's the part where they have like a layered defense, which obviously, as we're all uh, we all play Total War here, so we're all Siege experts. Um, <laughs> but they have like a layered defense, and like Dawn, like you said, like Dawn doesn't want them going across, but Jagatai says. W would we save lives if we broke out? And they're like, yes, mm. we lose men. Does, you know, that's what we're meant to, like, that's what's meant to happen. And I always imagine, like, the part, like, drums are, like, beating really hard because they literally hear, like, the thrum of the White Scars jet bikes. And they just, people are like, what is that? And they're like, the fenders just hear, like, flying overhead. And mm. they literally, like, dive straight into the Death Guard. It's, it's, it's like the, moment. um, it's for, for here's one for Colin. It's like that bit in uh, Halo Reach when all the warthogs are charging at the oh, Covenant in yeah. that big line, which is like <laughs> tip, of the, tip of the spear. I know tip of the spear. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But with white scars. Oh, and should... the... oh, go ahead, go ahead, Eli. I think we should definitely uh, give the uh, the nice mentions of Jakari for shot putting a Leviathan Dreadnought. Oh, yeah. Oh, that, I that. That. That's spoilers mm -hmm. for Warhawk's side, but he, li he one hands it. He one hands it across the battlefield. It's not even like a toss. It's across the battlefield. My it's favorite. like ten tons or so. Oh, it's a ton. Some, like... some Colin lore for you. <laughs> Unathletic as I am, that's how I used to shoot basketballs. <laughs> <laughs> nice. My favorite part is when he fought uh, just a little bit with the White Scars. We'll finish the, with the siege part, but just the last little bit is it has to be said about him versus Mortarian because they had like mm. kind of reoccurring fights yes, during. 
the heresy. Like they fought on the ashes of Prospero. Rest yeah, in peace, he spanks, Prospero. He spanks Mortarion pretty good on Prospero, and he runs away like a yeah. like a baby. little little baby. <laughs> we we want to baby. say something else, I don't. And then my favorite part is when they fight a guy. Like, this is demon Mortarion yeah. on terror, and it's Mortarian? this is like the book does a really good job of showing like the white scar. There's a part which says they willingly let some of them like get be taken prisoner and get executed so they could spread misinformation about this attack on Mort- Mortarian. And it's like, holy, mm. like they, you know, they are exhausted and they had this one last little attack on Mortarian, you know, the big smelly moth man <laughs> and uh, Jagatai. I won't spoil that for anyone, but, you know, I'm pretty sure at one point he just goes like, you know, Mortarian just like, you know, trying to justify himself and then Jagatai is like, you know, it's all ogre now. <laughs> and just, <laughs> just absolutely decks him. And you know, they do so I'm sure that image um, everyone wants to wipe immediately from their mm. uh, minds I mean, and not bring I mean, Shrek honest, into this. It, it reminds me a lot of when uh Fulgrim like tries to challenge Jagatai to like a duel and Jagatai's like, no I will win. Don't don't and he's like, oh why do you think you'll win? It's like because you'll treat it like a game and I will try to kill you. It's like oh Oh, what was the, what's, what's the master uh, of one-liners, dude? He's so good. Mm. Oh, well, there's the line after that, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, yeah. It's just like it's I like, hear you do strange things to oh. your your um your vessels, and it's like I hear you do strange things to your start. He's like, oh, oh, I love that. Part. It's a, it's a, that's the biggest mic drop I think in the entire Horus Harris. Oh no, it's that that and oh, Rogel Dawn. Last words to Martian are so good. I think that's the that's definitely the biggest mic drop though. Or mm. yeah, that's it's hard to compete with that. And then the one with Ruggle Dawn saying to Fulgrim, "You're just an idiot on a wall." Like <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, yeah. But the White Scars, they have they they perform in the Siege of Terror. They really mm. do. And even when like no one expected them to, and they're, then they're very much the uh, you know the. I, I was I, there's a bit of a rant here, but I had to. I really wanted to say it because the. Like the Mongol betrayal of them is so good because, like, I think when we're all growing up in history, you think that the Mongols were like, like even in old TV, they're like kind of like, oh, they are like savages, and it's like leaned into that by the writers. Mm. But actually, when you learn about history, the Mongols are, if not, they were more technology advanced than a lot yeah. of the people they were fighting, and they were obviously just as cultured as well. And so and, they I mean, tackle that, that really well. Series on on Netflix, Marco Polo is quite good for that because you see like the element of like, ah, they're like. They're introducing changes to like the people. They like go, oh, we've taken your city. Now we're going to like help you with like your standard of living. You're like, huh? <laughs> what? what? <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, they they are in, they're incredibly well done by I say Chris Rate, the author, because the mm. the white scars very much like because a, a lot of Warhammer obviously is uh, linked to like you know always oh, like mythological and it's like historical reference, but they are very much like when they are fleshed out and it's it's like quite difficult to get across how uh in- incredibly intelligent they are and they're very much a you know they they almost even say they rely on the guise of them looking like savages because they because they know that people will underestimate them and i and, always and i know a lot like of people that. say oh the salamanders are the good guy legion but i'm like to be honest i think the white scars have a pretty good run for yeah, their money where they're savvy. like yeah they're like we actually like treat people well we have manners <laughs> we're like we don't we don't gloat or like be a bit too crazy with like our own achievements they're just like and they like they look out for like saving civilians and you know the salamanders are nice guys but when your whole gimmick is (laughs) your whole thing is just war crimes it's like (laughs) 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 the whole thing is burning people alive Mm. yeah a bit of a tough one to reconcile i mean mean, there's i mean it's like xenos and heretics and mutants so like yeah come on they they, they don't matter but (laughs) doesn't vulcan have a i don't have a conversation with their Primarch about how they're way too, you know, war crimey, and then the other Primarch goes to Vulcan, alright, what about your flamethrowers, and he just doesn't understand the question. <laughs> like, is that I think Conrad Kurz. Like I think, I think it's somewhere. ironic, I think it might be ironically Conrad Kurz who says that, which oh, is probably. like, it, it coming from anybody else, like, yeah. <laughs> it would mean oh. more. Do, do we, do people want to hear what uh, Mortarian and Jagatai's last words are to each other is that too big of spoilers i think we should save that for jagatai's episode yeah i feel like that's 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 his story specific video Mm -hmm. um but i I, but uh, if you would like i have another quote i i I still got two quotes left to go so we've got one from shiban and one from jagatai so anyone want to read shiban's 
Eli, would you like to take this, or would you rather I take it? I, I um, can I can take it. All right. It, uh, oh, I wish. Sometimes I wish the white scars turned to slanesh. Uh, but <laughs> oh, anyway, I, I'm not gonna. <laughs> Uh, all right, uh, killing is nothing without beauty, and it may only be beautiful if it is necessary. He smiled as he rode. The memory lifted some of his torpor. When the con kills, it is beautiful. Mm. We do like the white scars, and they love their Primarch. Is that sh- Is that Shibon Tatsh? Is that Shibon Tatshir or Tatshir? Am I saying that right? Is he's the one with like the robot? Like most yeah, he's of got like the, the um, robot. Is, is his eye is replaced. He's got like some modern augmentics and stuff, and he has like he, he lost injury. a load of his body. Like there's yeah. a thing about just a little dabble in white scars here as well. They don't like dreadnoughts, do they? Oh, I, I, I can't remember why. I must say I can't remember why. And they, it's like a, it's like I'll go a, into it confined in a bit, yeah. to the prison. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, so with that in mind, uh, I will get to the dreadnoughts in a bit, but I'm just going to now talk about how they're organized and then after this i suppose we'll just talk about some cool characters from the uh, white scars and that'll be uh, that'll be us for today hell but, yeah um, so talking about the white scars um during their peak they had about ninety-five thousand astartes during the great Cru- crusade um and most of the time even into the 30 uh, into the 41st millennium they often comprise into 10 to 15 man squads uh they're because they are never based anywhere very long they don't there's like a good bit where um i mentioned earlier the the general lady from the uh the army is chatting to jagatai and he's like she's talking about like supply lines and people are complaining like it's really difficult to get supplies to you because you don't have like a centralized base and jagatai's like that's our strength we don't have like a big target you can attack because you if you chip away at us we're all over the place so you can't really like interrupt our command structure um, into the, uh, the, the 41st millennium, although Jagatai was in charge of the Legion as the Kargan or Khan of Khans, now uh, the honorific of Great Khan is given to the equivalent of Chapter Master. And they, they rule the, uh, the, the fortress monastery of Quan Zhao, which is on the homeworld of Chigoris. Uh, like I said earlier, the captains of the Chapter and previously the Legion are known as Khans. Prior to the Codex Astartes, they used to have 20, 20 different companies known, known as hordes. So imagine, like, I think it's probably, yeah, 1,000 Astartes per company times 20. And these were known as Ordus. And the Ordus were commanded by, uh, quote, Noyan Khans, which each led these hordes during the Great Crusade and Horus Heresy. And they're like the equivalent of a Lord Commander. Um, Hasik Khan who I mentioned earlier, he was one of these uh, Noyan Khans, and they had names such as the Ordu of Stone and the Ordu of Earth. Um, companies in the chapter are known as Brotherhoods, and each company is led by a Khan. So a captain leads 100 Asartes or so, and that's a company. Um, in the current 41st millennium, there are 10 companies. They are the Spearpoint Brothers, the Firefist Brothers, the Eagle Brothers, the Tolwar Brothers, the Stormwrath Brotherhood, the Hawk's Eye Brotherhood, the Painstalker Brotherhood, the Blood Rider Bro- Brotherhood, the Stormbolt Brotherhood, and the Windspeaker Brotherhood. So they love to put Brotherhood at the end of every one of them. There's a lot of brother in Warhammer in general, though. Just everything is... Super is... Jagatai Brothers. Da, 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 da. Do, you guys, do you guys have this as well? <laughs> like, it's almost like brothers, like our gender-neutral, like, acknowledgement term for someone who works within Warhammer. It's like, yeah, yes, brother. brother. Instead of yes, being, like, brother. colleague, friend, it's just everyone is brother. Oh, hi, lady. I do, brother. like, in um, <laughs> Def, uh, Deathwing, I think it's Def, uh, Space Hulk Deathwing, it's just, like, when you're in the lobby, it says, brothers waiting. It's, yeah, like, not yeah. players, <laughs> brothers. <laughs> I like awesome. I like to imagine that you know space marines are fighting alongside sisters of battle and just going brother and it's very clearly a sword. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sister, I am pinned here. Um, <laughs> so at least it's not on each are... <laughs> That'd be worse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, and and the other, and, and and more than probably any other chapter, we know that chapters have sometimes uh, variations on the the. Um, the different specialist roles like for example you get iron fathers in the iron hands you get rune priests in the space wars 
pretty much every one of those specialist ranks in the uh, in the White Scars have has a unique name. So psychers are known as Zadian Aga, and librarians or Astartes, who are also psychers, are known as Stormseers. And their use of the warp they call the test of heaven. Um, you mentioned earlier how that the um, that the White Scars were pro librarian. And uh, the interesting thing about the Storms is, is they always knew about the terrors of the Warp from their inception. They always knew kind of like, mm, there's something a bit malevolent going on here. And so they were always a bit more restrained in their power. Um, one of the reasons they were, you know, they always saw it as useful. But unlike the Thousand Sons who were like, give me all this, put it in my mouth, yum, Warp, yum, yum. They were like, no, 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 calm down. That's a bit too much Warp. You've got a problem. Um... So Jagatai uh, refused to hide the, 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 the machinations of the warp to his legion, unlike a lot of the other, you know, pro psycho guys like Magnus. He was like, no, I'm not going to I'm not going to lie to them. I'm going to say be a bit careful with this. And in that regard, he would argue with the emperor quite a lot because the emperor's like, no, you shouldn't. You shouldn't tell them about this. He's like, no, I'm telling them they're adults. They can play with the warp as much as they want, but they've got to be careful. Use protection. Um, <laughs> and alongside Sanguinius and Magnus the Red, he would found the doctrines of the Librarius. Yet, even though everyone says it was um, Magnus and Sanguinius, Jagatai also did a lot of the work and he's never been credited for it. Just because I, I that it was wasn't mostly, it wasn't it mostly his idea, yeah. I think, because yeah, they. He was the one who came up with it, more or less. They and feared. He, he um, also, oh, go ahead, sorry. sorry. Here you go, here you go. I was say, they feared. Uh, like Jagatai hates interference from terror. Mm. That's why they always run so fast. But they always <laughs> knew that like, they always knew something would come along that would restrain them. So the librarist yeah. was like a answer to like, oh, here's an actual rules where we, here's our rule set and yeah. our philosophy that will help us keep ourselves in check. So it was it was a it was a counter proposal to stop yeah. the. It's like the let's make attention. our own rules before someone imposes their rules on us. Um, yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and Magnus wanted Psychers untethered. The Khan said, no, let's restrain them a bit. And Sanguinius mediated between the two. He was like, I kind of see both of your points, so let's find a compromise. He's a therapist, essentially. Sanguinius <laughs> the therapist. Sanguinius is the best therapist. He's, of all the he is ups. just the best boy, isn't he? he there's he nothing so wrong good. with him. And we don't, he's, not like, he's not too perfect, Sanguinius, but he's always like, damn it, man. He's like Brad Pitt, you know what I mean? You can't, you're like, I can't hate you, but like, <laughs> goddamn. He does have some anger problems. Uh, oh, true. yeah. Oh, true, true. But only when, like, hundreds of his, like, sons are massacred by a demon in one fell swoop. Like, Fair oh, enough. Like, that's relatable. That's a very relatable you know? moment in the modern yeah, era. It's like, swing of an axe, <laughs> hundred dead. Yeah. Oh, I'm cross. You ever had um, your child killed by a demon? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, how I mentioned this earlier, that... Um, the White Scars do not like Dreadnoughts. Um, some would say they don't have them. They do. They just don't like using them. They have to have them just in case. And they are known as Uhan Solban. And there's a few reasons why they don't like them. One, their combat doctrine doesn't really often need some slow-moving tank. So there's that. But also they see them as... Uh, somewhat like a prison like if you're interred in a dreadnought you can't roam the, the planes anymore you can't feel the wind in your hair as you're going along on your jet bike you're entombed in a piece of metal and it, it's not really an honored thing like the iron fathers they want to be a dreadnought they're like uh, the iron hands they're like i want to be in that thing because that's really cool opposite for the white scars they're like get that thing away from me i don't like it and it is uh it is a depressing thing to be a white scar in a dreadnought uh, never feeling the wind in your hair, never smelling the grass, you know. Release just... your inhibitions, feel the rain on your <laughs> skin. <laughs> no one else. I, uh... Why they put wheels on it? Put, uh, put damn wheels on the goddamn dreadnought. That would be amazing. <laughs> I, uh, that reminds me of a tabletop game. Uh, not I played, it's one that happened a, like a, over 10 years ago. Uh, it's just what you saying the dreadnoughts don't fit in with their uh, doctrine. It was, it was before I think uh, tabletop Warhammer. Before you had to deploy a certain amount of forces, like you couldn't just put everything in reserve. Uh, this guy, he was playing White Scars, and he would put everything in reserve, so then he could oh, just deep strike it all at once. Uh, but the problem was, 
the other guy had a, just a bunch of crew, and they could deploy very <laughs> close to the deployment zone of the other player. Mm -hmm. So when the next turn came, like turn one comes, White Scar goes, they're all in reserve. I'm not putting anything on the board yet. And then the crew guy just goes, all right, I put all of my units in your deployment zone and you lose. <laughs> <laughs> because... Yeah, that's like it. Yeah, oh, because like he, you couldn't deep strike anywhere until the, I think it's like at least the third turn. Uh, I think I think it was he was coming in from reserve, so you came on from your board edge, basically. Yeah, mm -hmm. because his, his board edge was completely taken up by crew, and you need to be yeah. at least nine inches away <laughs> from an enemy unit to deploy. Mm -hmm. he I think that's a war. It. <laughs> it's like a it's like a tournament legend. Yeah, you know? I, I like to imagine wow. like some. White Scar Battlefield is a complete loss <laughs> because the conga line of Groot are just <laughs> in the way. Rules used to be crazy, man. The Necrons, when you played Necrons, if you lost like 60% of your army, you auto lost, I think. Oh, they just yeah. like phased out and left. Yeah, but they were really OP. Third edition Necrons were crazy. Indeed. There, mm. there was a bit of White Scar's tabletop lore for everyone. Nice. Yeah. Well, to, to be still fair, need wheels, wheels we're, we're, on damn dreadnoughts, please. <laughs> what, what you're saying about the dreadnoughts, uh, for this reason, a lot of the times they actually send these dreadnoughts to Holy Terra because they're like, go to oh. Terra, go to Chagoras, and guard the gene stores. And that's more or less all they use them for because they're like, you're not going to be seeing much battle, mate. I'm sorry. Um, but you can still serve the, the, the chapter if you can just watch our, like, our spawn point in a way. Like, watch our gene stores, make sure no one messes with it. You'll still have some honor in that regard. Did Bit they sad. use them? Did they use them once? I think there was one battle where Jagatai was like, "All right, we have to use the dreadnoughts." Yeah, and he wasn't happy about it. He was like, oh, "We have to." I'm Fine. sorry, we have to. Chuck in the big lunch boxes at the enemy. <laughs> <laughs> Get our sandwiches back. Um, and, <laughs> and yeah, like um, just rattling off the last of the uh, the specialists. So the apothecaries of the legion are called MC. The tech marines are called Iron Khans, which is quite cool. Um, That's a really good name, Iron Khans. Iron it sounds like awesome. a '90s um, like action movie, doesn't it? Like or wrestler. That's Arnold a wrestler. wrestler. Tiger is in Iron Khan. I do like that. To be fair, mm. um, and yeah, uh, and the chaplains are just known as chaplains, but the the lead chaplain is known as the Voice of the Storms. So that's pretty cool. Um, the elite first company uh, terminators are called the keshig they're not as speedy because they're obviously in terminator armor but again they're usually an honor guard they're usually bodyguards to the great khan or in the 41st millennium uh corsaro khan because we'll go into it later the great khan's not very healthy these days um and during the um porous heresy those who were marked for punishment were known as the sagya mazan so uh hibu khan uh, you've probably seen a picture of him. He's got like this kind of like really cool face paint thing going on. He's got like all these like scribblings on his armor, and he's got a big like uh, I guess like the equivalent of like a forty k katana. Uh, those are the guys who originally were traitor, and then they went sorry, won't do it again, and then they <laughs> they then redeemed themselves through battle. As and also I believe um, Torgun was similar. He, he oh was, yeah, for a stint he was a traitor, and then he's like, I love you, Shiban, and then. They were separated, and then he came back, and Shaban's like, I don't like you anymore, because you were a traitor for a bit. And he's like, sorry. Uh, um, yeah, rubs, you know, sort of like pivots his leg like nervously in the corner. Like, <laughs> just holds. I, I love that part where they, uh, they re, the, uh, was it the Zagyar Mazan? I think it's their name. Yeah, yeah, Zagyar Mazan. I, oh, the bit where they like, where they, a lot of them, when they're still with the, before they return back to Terra in the scene, mm. they redeem themselves, isn't, is a, the, it's, have you got to talk about that, or should I? Uh, you say can go through that. I was gonna say, yeah, they have like a really cool part where they kind of they use it like a trap, and Jagger's like hates to do it because he kind of knows yeah. they're like redeeming themselves, but he, they they like to say that we let us do this, and so they kind of leave his flagship um, as a trap for Matarian. So Matarian like kind of teleports in with his uh, honor guard, and they look around, they're like. Huh? Like, where did everyone go? <laughs> There's no way the Jagatai left his like flagship, and they went on the other ship. They did, and then the uh, the Sagyar Mazan they jump over the wreck. Like, all of them, they're all traitors. Like, yeah, you know, they've all, they've all been shunned. They've all, but then they all just like all of them, they just redeem themselves. And most of them are Ter the Terranborn as well. Mm. So this is where they kind of like bring back their honor. Then they defy Horus, the, the you know the 
corrupted traitor and they just attack Mortarin and they have no chance of winning, but they just do it. I think Mortarin asks, why would you do it? And I think one of them just like, is Torgun? I think he's the last one alive. He just smiles mm. and just laugh. And he's like, you know, what, you could redemption. Why not? <laughs> redemption, brother. Why not? I've just, got nothing going on this weekend. <laughs> yeah. And then they just sadly, they all, they all die. But it's, uh, yeah. I, I love that moment because it's like, a, you know, they, they, they really like just, they, they couldn't catch him in the end, you know, too fast. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that's more or less all I wanted to talk about in that section. So before we go on to the last bit where we talk about specific characters for uh, rounding off the episode, I've got one more quote to go. And I believe, Colin, you're the only one left not to, not, not to have read one. So would you like to read this one from our boy Jagatai? I would be happy to. <clears throat> you are nobody's slaves, he said, his voice low but firm. You are the Ordu of Jagadai. We take orders from no one. We take no one's word. We are on our own, just as we always have been. And if there is truth to be found in this, then we will find it ourselves. We gotta love Jagadai. And the White Skulls. I like how there's like so many elements and layers to them. Like We were just talking about the Sagyamazan. Like, there's just so many like cool little, oh, they did this. Oh, they were traded for a bit. Oh, they had like a kind of redeeming company. Oh, that's quite cool. Oh, they don't like dreadnoughts. Oh, that's quite cool. They've got little loads. Oh, that's cool moments, you know. Um, right. So we're we've now come to the last segment where we're going to just briefly touch on some of the characters. And, and and again, Hal, you wanted to talk about some here and there. So if I've missed any that you want to talk about, go for it. Um, so starting off. Um, the, the great Khan in the 41st millennium is Jubal Khan, not to be confused with the other Jubal Khan. Uh, he is uh, currently too injured to effectively lead the chapter. He was uh, taken by, I believe it was the Red Corsairs for a bit and tortured. Yep, yep. And he was so badly injured, he can't fight like he used to. And he's quite old. So um, he is in charge, but only in an advisory position at the moment. Um, other 41st millennium guys, we've got Corsaro Khan, the master of the hunt and captain of the third company. Uh, he leads the Eagle Brotherhood and he is effectively their, their appointed war leader because Jubal is too injured. He is the one in practicality leading the white scars into battle because he's got, he, you know, this guy goes out into the galaxy. They have this scroll of vengeance, right? Every time the White Scars fight an enemy that gets away, they get out a pen or a quill, probably, and they go, what was his name? Uh, Trevor the Despoiler. Right, okay, Trevor. And Trevor, Trevor the Despoiler. <laughs> yeah, Tre Trevor the Smasher. It's like, Trevor, he's going on the scroll. And they'll write his name down, and then the Master of the Hunt is then tasked where he goes, hey, uh, he goes through all the companies, and he goes, you, 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 you're coming with me. We're going for a hunt. And they will track this guy down for hundreds of years if they have to, cut off his head, bring it back to Chagoras, put it on a spike outside their fortress monastery, go, job done, strike it off the list, have, big, have a big meal, have a feast, uh, and then we'll go find another one. I they think also, that's really cool. They cover the skull as well in silver. Yeah, they like embalm it with like this oily stuff, I think it is. So it's so it immortal. I, yeah. I remember, I always liked that part because it's... I just yeah, imagine there's, there's probably there's like skulls who have been there. Yes, the, the path forever. to their fortress monastery is lined with the skulls of those they've killed from their scroll of vengeance. I think that's pretty cool because they're um, pretty welcoming like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. They're quite cool. Um, and the thing is, yeah, uh, Corsaro is really good at it. He's killed like seven of the scroll of vengeance. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, he killed that Alpha Legion guy. Uh, he's killed a few. He uh, he had a fight with. Um, a Necron, uh, what was he called? The Storm Lord, I think it is. Um, oh, Imotech. Yeah, Imotech, I think it was. Um, he didn't get him, uh, but he, I believe he did blow up his uh, flagship. <laughs> that was Hel wasn't that Helbrecht who... Oh, that's yeah, Helbrecht, sorry. No, there is definitely a Necron he got, though. I can't remember who it was. Ah, I, I, oh. I was thinking as well, like, their scroll is kind of very similar to Colin, like, you, you know, the, the great book of grudges, essentially, yeah. where mm -hmm. they, they very much have the same honor system of, oh, you like, just, you just gave me like, you know, I said hi, and you just shrugged your shoulders you that one time. To live. I remember Ooh. that for a 10 millennia. <laughs> mm. You will pay in gold or blood. And the white scars don't seem to care about gold. Well, oh, I can't yeah, they're very much uh, just blood. Pretty I know, much. I know yeah. the, um, the Necron I'm thinking of, I can't remember his name, but he has like a bodyguard. 
and Corsaro got uh, captured oh, Oberon? alongside Oberon and then his buddy. What's the the actual guy? Is it yeah. Hendrick? Yeah, Simba Sword. That's the one. Zandrick. Yeah, he he like goes to get him and then he's captured and then he's like he's alongside an Eldar and he helps the Eldar escape. And then they get like attacked. They get ambushed by the Necron and his bodyguard. And Corsaro like carves him up several times, but he he you know he just keeps you know resetting because hmm. Necron are ridiculous. And then the the Necron guy's like, "You were really good at fighting. You can go." And he's like, "I'll get you one day." Um, and also, he's currently uh, postponed his hunt for Shadow Sun, who was the most recent uh, target to slay. He went to the Damocles uh, campaign. He tried to kill her several times. He did pretty good. But then Jabal was like, um, we need you back home. Uh, Red Corsairs, yeah, it's not going well. Um, but he's like a really cool character. And he's like the kind of figurehead uh, poster boy for the White Scars in the 41st Millennium. Um, I hope we get to see him in the Dawn of... Because the Dawn of Fire, like 40k, like ongoing like Indomitus Crusade series. I hope we get to see a lot of these... Uh, I guess neglected legion, like because yeah. White Scars in the forty k setting, they don't have as much of the vibrance and fleshing mm. out as they do in thirty k. Because the thirty k yeah. characters are much more fleshed out than the forty k ones. Mm. Well, speaking of which, uh, I'm just gonna. I've got three more I want to mention. Then, if you want to mention any Hal, then go right ahead. Sure, um, sure. I'm also gonna mention Jubal Khan from the Horus Heresy, not to be confused with Jubal Khan from the 41st um i love this was, guy he was known as the lord of summer lightning and he was one of the best duelists in the horus heresy so you think of sigismund you think of course wayne from the dark angels you think of uh all these Khan, like, you know karn you've you know Ralderon from uh you know the blood angels jabal khan was like the best fighter in the white scars he was so good um he would have during the Horus Heresy. He would attempt to kill Abaddon, and unfortunately, even though he's a really cool character, um, Abaddon got him. He, you know, he, yeah, it's so annoying, man. I can't it's really anticlimactic because they they yeah. build him up so much, and then it's just like dead. Oh. It's so upsetting because again, like no offense, people dying to Abaddon is like, d is Abaddon really that good, or they just like need him to, like he's just oh, add, add him yeah. to the tally because he needs to look better. But he's also, I think he's probably my, one of my favorite of the Horus Heresy White Scars because he's also mm. a Terran. He's not actually. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's a cool part in Jagatai's Primark book, I think, where they've like they briefly return back to Jagoras. It's been like a couple of decades. And they're having like a ceremony. Like they're all like you know drinking fermented milk because you know how it be. And I think I think, yeah. I think one, of the, one, one of the one of the Terrans yeah, even rubbish milk real shit. <laughs> yeah. One of the Terrans even said like it actually tastes pretty bad, <laughs> but, yeah. no, quite, quite, but they, they like it. And uh, like him, Jubal's like fighting another uh, Chagoran Astarte, and they're just in the like, they're in a loincloth and they have a dagger, and it's like and they are literally they fight and they duel and they are. They're Astartes, but they are sweating. Like they have been. <laughs> this is getting this is going a different direction. Uh, <laughs> they uh, they fight until they are literally at the edge of exhaustion, and Jubal wins. And it even says like he goes over to his friends. He speaks perfect Jagoran because he mm. he's he's the example of what Jagatai tried to do was like blend in the Legion, like the Terrans and yeah. the um. Like he he doesn't join the. Uh, yeah. There's no Terran Astartes. There's no Jagoran Astartes. There's just White Scars. White Scars. Yeah. He's he's really cool, and his mm. he's a if you see his like, art of him as well, he's a very smiley yeah. guy. He's he looks yeah. really happy. He, he, he's also known as uh, he who laughs in slaughter. I think it is. Uh, oh, that's a little bit happy. That's a little bit like, different yeah. vibe than I he, was he, he, he was known as the one who like I think he was the one who like was most known for laughing his ass off when he was fighting because he was just having <laughs> so much fun, um, and he was also the first master of the hunt. So. Uh, Jagatai created the title for him, and then every generation of White Scars has a new Master of the Hunt. Um, speaking of Terranborn uh, Astartes, another one I want to mention briefly is Solomon Khan. Uh, he's a bit of a small character, but I think he's pretty cool. He was a Terranborn White Scar, and he he was... Um, I did a brief video on my channel for him. He he did a, a bit of battling, and he fought alongside the Sisters of Silence, and 
basically they all died and he collected some of their artifacts and gave them back to the Sisters of Silence when he got back to, uh, I think it was the Somnus Citadel. And they were so ha grateful to him, for him to do this, he had a, an honor guard of Sisters of Silence and his men. So it was just like, oh, here's this cool. captain of the White Scars, also got an honor guard of Sisters of Silence. That's pretty cool. Um, just a little thing. Uh, and the other one I want to mention before, uh, well, the last one I'll mention anyway, is Targutai Yusugai. Um, yes, Chief Stormseer of the White Scars. This man was basically the advisor to Jagatai in a lot of ways. He was, um, you know, he was the guy I mentioned earlier who was like helping the, uh, the, the the general lady to to assimilate into the the the, the culture of the White Scars. Um, he was there during the Council of Nikea, and he wanted to uh, you know preserve the Librarius. He uh, aided Revuel Arvida, the last son of Prospero from the Thousand Sons, to getting him to Holy Terror, where he would eventually become Janus. He did a lot. He also, uh, when, when the uh, White Scars were trying to get back to Holy Terror, they couldn't get there because of warp storms. And they discovered that there was this artifact known as the Dark Glass. And this thing was basically the prototype Golden Throne. And as we all know, there's only a few people that can use the Golden Throne. The Emperor, Magnus the Red, and Malkador used it for like a few minutes and he disintegrated because it just requires that much psychic power. Turned to Cheeto dust. I don't even yeah. know what Cheetos are, but I know that's a thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Snack poofs. But, yeah. but basically what this device would allow would be for the White Scars to transport their vessels, their fleet, their remaining battered fleet to Holy Terror. So this guy sits on the Dark Glass Throne and while, you know, he, he basically powers it with his psychic abilities. And whilst he's disintegrating, he, you know, he says goodbye to the Khan, his, you know, the Kargan, Jagat, uh, Jagatai, who is very upset about it. But he's like, it's the only way I can, you know, preserve my legion. He also sends a message to uh, Revuel Arvida, like, don't submit to the flesh change. You know, you got this. Go and, you know, preserve the honor of your legion. And he disintegrates preserving you know his his chapter he's a really cool character that's only in a few books but he he leaves a, a big impact uh for the the white scars and just one of the the, the coolest characters i think in the series to be honest um, he was also jagatai's best friend as well which yeah, is, it's, much, really, yeah. it's really it's really it's really a sad moment when he like mm. i guess emulates but he's really he's really upsetting because jagatai like the first time he's, he's like super cool and he's always in control but it's the first time yeah. where he like jagatai almost i guess I want to say like cry, kind of almost yeah. breakdown. He has a little like, whimper. You better not do this. And he's like, no, I have to do it because otherwise we're, 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 we're done. So I'm going to give my life for this. And he's like, you better not. And he does. And then he gets really upset. Um, but yeah, is there anyone else you wanted to mention, Hal? Oh, oh yes. Uh, oh, <laughs> I, have, yes. I have two. Uh, I have, there's, we said earlier, we had a quote from Shiban Khan. And mm -hmm. he's also nicknamed, he is called, I think I said a little bit about him earlier. He's called Tach Seer because. Mm. Shiban was originally friends with Torgan, who was one of the Terranborns yeah. who betrayed part of the Warrior Lodges. He betrayed uh, his friendship there. And Shiban actually led like a company to assault their brothers to stop like the uh when they were above Prospero, they tried to stop them forcing Jagatai's hand uh into joining Horus. And Shiban is like, he's not like super high up, but he just like, he gathered his men and is like, oh, what are we willing to do this? And they're all like, yeah, you know, victory or death. And they literally like jet bike in space over to the flagship. Yeah, yeah. And it's really cool. And like loads of them, it's like, it's literally white scars killing each other. It's really sad. And then um, that battle actually costs him like, he almost gets put in a dreadnought. That's, and obviously, mm. dreadnoughts we said earlier for white scars, it's, fate worse than death and he's called Tatch Seer because like he has an unreasonable amount of augmetics on his body and he can't Especially even fight. For a white scar. Yeah like, and he can't fight with the same skill level until I think until he gets to terror when they can give him they give him like an upgrade. But he's very much like he, he was like a very happy white scar. Like he dabbled in the arts before like like Jagatai uh encouraged him to do but when they like as soon as he gets injured he's like one of the uh, effects of the the heresy on the white scar he doesn't draw anymore and he's just very like, like a very bitter person but he uh and he fights at the siege of terror and he, he's basically the last kind of so many of the white scars die that he's like one of the last leaders 
and obviously he's ironically Tatsy. He's like kind of a legend now because he's the one who helped save the Khan from mm. the traitors. And yeah, I, th- I think in the Warhawk book, there's like it's from his perspective a lot of the uh, moments in that. I would, I would go into spoilers there. And the last one I think of is I can't remember his name exactly, but I think it might be Jochi or it might be something closer to that. It's the other. It's the other White Scar character we have in the Horus Heresy uh, Warhawk book. But he's um, he's one of the, he's one of the newest recruits. Yeah, is it Jang Sai? It might be Jang Sai. Yeah, but he's Jansai. he's like a younger guy. He's oh, he's really young. He's actually yeah. he's this is he's recruited at the beginning of the heresy, hmm. and like he he is fast like him and loads others were fast tracked, and he's not even from Chagoris. They're actually from they, they were in such need of soldiers that he's actually not he's from the Asan sector. I think they even comment at how. Yeah. I'm uh, not sure why Jagatai has such a preference for having specifically Asian people in his, or only Yasani Yusa- <laughs> Yusa- sector people in his le- uh, legion. So it's almost like, I'm not sure why they did obviously because of the, the look but of them. The thing is as well with his art, his art depictions, he's he's a bit more like Japanese inspired. He looks Japanese, like, yeah. Yeah, and he, like the way his hair's done and the, the armor rather than Mongolian. But I think that's pretty cool that it's like, yeah, he's a, he's still a cool looking character. He's a, he's a he's a cool one because like you follow some of his perspective in the sea and he's the one who like um tells uh Shiban like basically they try and take the Lions Gate spaceport uh, like they just as like a and obviously get rid of the death guard as like a kind of last stand because once they basically take it and they hold up in there they can't return back to the actual uh main like palace area they're basically locked there and they're obviously trying to hold the spaceport so when the lawyers arrive they can land and they hold that, and he's the one who like helps stop the white skulls from going on a rampage and like leaving it. And they basically say, "We'll, we'll hold this as like sacred ground." And it's like a, he's like a really cool meeting, like you know, the newer generation of white scars and then mm. the older with like uh, Shiban. And he, I, th- I don't know if he survives this scene. I hope he does because we're not there yet. But he's a <laughs> he's a he's an interesting respect of like of an outsider, but yet still like alien to what would be a, a Terran like culture if you know what i mean he's very he's definitely mm-hmm. not like what imperium is or imperial yeah, he's is an outsider in that he's not from either of the two main factions of the white scars like terror or chagoras and it's like it's an outsider outsider for an outsider legion huh yeah okay. but he's uh he's, he's I, I think they're cool the white scars <laughs> 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 no, he's yeah, he's like the last one i think is pretty cool o- overall the legion itself is pretty uh again like now now you like once you know more about them, you're like oh these are actually like the I guess I won't say the dark horse, but that's honestly because like they have a lot of imagery of like speed and horses. Mm. But they're actually they don't like... have as many characters as a lot of the other factions as well that are like named. So I think the good thing is when they are made, when they do have some depth, they are they hit pretty hard, which is quite cool. And the, the characters are pretty, as in, they're fleshed out to the degree like they show all aspects of Jagatai too. I think mm. uh, like like Torgun, Shiban, uh, Targatai, Yusuge, like they're all very much very different people and uh they they it's, it's really i find it really sad because obviously they lose, they lose a lot of people during the siege uh, a lot of the named characters which is actually different from a lot of legions like a lot of the named characters like even on isfan like oh, a lot of them survive but a lot of the named characters of the white scars just and they, they they go and it's really upsetting but i, I like the white scars though they're pretty they're they're definitely like top three uh for me i, I never thought they would be but they're definitely this- up there now this artwork I found at Jagged Eye I sent it in the chat. It makes him look like Kratos. Like, is that is that just me looking at that? Like, now I'm going to think of Jagged Eye as... Oh, that's Kratos. him versus the Keeper of yeah, Secrets. Yeah, I, I just... With the pattern mm. of the scar and how pale his skin is this photo, I don't know yeah, if I could be able to... That's when he's um he's looking after his adopted son, uh, Revio La Vida. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if I'm going to be able to unsee Jagged Eye as anything but Kratos now. <laughs> oh, he has a he has a definitely he has a mean like he has, not a mean streak he has like an anger like his he is there's a reason I have I, I I've never talked a lot but I have to talk at this one moment which is so <laughs> good in one of the books it's the part where I don't remember the name of the character but one of the white scars dies during the Great Crusade and they're fighting orcs and Jagatai they're fighting with the Sons of Horus and basically the character like falls into like a lava pit. And he like starts sink like he starts to sink slowly. Jagatai stops fighting, goes over to the edge and watches his friend like melt away. And he just yells for everyone to get out. The orcs stop fighting. The white scars and the sons of Horus 
the, oh sorry i think they're called um lunar wolf sorry still they like leave and jagatai just starts like just very slowly picking up the paint and he starts to like just munch like munch the orcs down and it said like they're watching and one of the lunar wolves like just goes yeah and tries to join in and then like the white tiger grab him go no 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 like that. and mm, it literally one, says yeah. at the end they, they say at the end of it also they say during it they actually can't see him because he's moving that fast they even the astartes can't see him and he's just at the end of it he's like a basically a red painting because he is just covered mm. in orc gore and uh I, I, I that has to be said that's as like a last kind of how epic the white scars are because that moment <laughs> is awesome He's probably the best dad out of all the Primarchs. He, he, and adoptive dad. He, had, he, he adopts sad. Revy Larvida and he yeah. stands over his like flesh-changing body and def- he fights the uh, the, uh, the the picture that you just sent, Colin, of the demon. He's just like, you're not you're not touching him. Get away. I don't think there's any other moments I can remember when a Primarch is sad that their space marines died. But Colin gets sad and mad all the time about it. Well, even when um, Arvida is being turned into Janus and he's being imbued with a shard of Magnus by Malkador, he's like getting consumed in like psychic fire, and Jagged Eye's like, "I am ending this," and he like breaks the machine. <laughs> it's like you are not killing this. You know, he's come this far, and uh, yeah, he, he's he's a very good. He's a good dad. He's a very good dad. Good dad to a good legion, indeed. Mm. But otherwise, I guess that's the White Scars. Have you all uh, enjoyed today's episode? Indeed. Indeed. Thank you for Indeed. allowing me to take the beginner section. Mm. Do you think you know, like, do you think they are they moved up in your list now, Colin? Uh, I'd, again, I'd have to think about that more. Jagged Eyes definitely moved up in my Primark list. I'd probably put him at third now. Oh, Who's oh yeah. One? Uh, number one, I'll go up. Two is uh, actually Fulgrim. I quite nice. His story is, Good choice. at least in terms of narrative, he's a very tragic person. I uh, better not I hear remember. Magnus in the it's, next five seconds. It's not seconds. Ma- Magnus. Magnus has done many <laughs> things wrong. I'm not falling Good. for that. <laughs> My favorite is still Gilliman. I, uh, um, I really, I really like Gilliman. Nice the blue boys. Mm. But, the Smurfs. I, I, I like boys. Gilliman too. But otherwise, he's, he's the best one. <laughs> I think Jagatai is my favorite. Hmm. Well, that's very, thank you very much, Andy. Uh, that's a yeah, that, that's a lot to cover because obviously they're quite. Mm. There's, there's a lot more mm. law in them recently, so we definitely appreciate that. And uh, for our next episode, I think Eli, what was your choice for our next episode of the podcast? Oh well, the we're going to learn about the the true emperor, and it's not Horus or Abaddon or the emperor. Well, it is the emperor, <laughs> but he has four arms. Or six, depending on which cult you're into. Uh, we're going to talk about the Gene Stealer cults next. Yes, time. Mm. that's going to get dark <laughs> and squirrely. Definitely, they're the most depressing faction, I might say. There's no happy ending mm. for a Gene Stealer. Cult. Praise the star, children! Mm. Praise the star, but children! Awesome. The day of ascension is upon us. <laughs> ascension looks like bug mm. monsters. Or okay. unification with biomass. I get my Lovecraftian influence in. I'm enjoying that. <laughs> so, I can't so wait. Cool. I got the Cordex, and now that they're like the, my favorite faction ever. <laughs> well, prepared to be. I'm uh, about to say something really like. I, I, what's the way to describe like an alien getting in someone's body without <laughs> being a bit <laughs> sus? Uh, uh, Uncomfortable. Just go, yeah, let's just leave it there. <laughs> just, just, just go watch the uh, the chestburster scene from Alien, and then a flood infection yeah. form. Yeah. Well, prepared to get your. <laughs> chest bursted on the next episode ladies and gentlemen <laughs> with, with a gc oh, I, I almost forgot as well like, i think actually also if only if any of you are still hankering for more white scars content i think this by the time this episode is released the same day i'm doing a white scars video so just putting that out there as well <laughs> i also did jagatai khan as well so shameless oh, yeah, your jagatai yeah, video is very good I, I had the part in it where they do the i do strange things to your warriors so if you want to see jagatai drop a line <laughs> Uh, other than that, uh, thank you very much, guys. Uh, make sure to like, please subscribe. Uh, we need our. It's for our mental health. I swear. <laughs> I'm just, just. I'm joking. Uh, I judge my. I judge my self worth by how high the number goes. Please, please sub. You you <laughs> you, you, you jest, but <laughs> let's be honest. Uh, thank you. Yes, thank you so much for watching. Uh, GT the Colts will be on next time, and 
Uh, I hope you all enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed uh, White Scars, Jagatai, and uh, you know, hopefully they're moved up in your lists, like for many of us lot here. And we'll see you all next time. Have a good one. The con,